Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 65th episode of Mind Morphin Power Rangers, as well as the 5th episode of Season 2 titled Putty on the Brain. We start this episode off in the hallways of Angel Grove High School, where Zack comes in wearing these dumb 90s sunglasses, and he comes up to Billy, referring to him as Billster. He apparently picked up the glasses from a swap meet this last weekend, and Zack seems to think that they'll be perfect for science class. Billy says they're sturdy enough, and Zack insists that they're cool looking too. Meanwhile, on the moon, Zed says that he couldn't have planned it better himself. What? His plan is to cast a spell into the glasses so that Zack and Billy will see the other teens as putties. Goldar makes a decent point in saying, couldn't I just like take them off? But Zed says, no, it's going to be something that'll happen even when you don't want it to. Zack and Billy put on the glasses and they immediately see the other teens as putties and they start freaking out. Zed thinks that this is hilarious. Anyways, Principal Kaplan comes up and they think that the putties are going after Kaplan, so Zack and Billy burst through the group and they get manhandled to detention. Both in school are recording everyone's voice to reveal the identities of the Power Rangers this week, but Miss Appleby needs them to feed her iguana a box of Cheerios. Then, of course, Zed turns the lizard into a monster, the Sal Iguana, and they panic and run away screaming. In class, the teens are taking a test and Zack is wigging out because everyone's a damn putty. Oh, and Skull gets some into detention because he accidentally plays a recording of Miss Appleby's voice. In the detention, Bulk and Skull put on the shades and they panic and freak out, running away. Zed plans to send down the real putties to mess with Zack and Billy, and in the fight, they'll finish each other off. Zack and Billy get ambushed by real putties when the real teens teleport in, completely messing up Zack and Billy. There's a really cool putty fight on the playground, and they use the environment just right to the tune of Fight by Ron Wasserman. Then things get weird because Trini beats a putty and she waves and says, hey Zack, who then flies down to hit her, but then he realizes it's the wrong putty at the last second, and Tui Train delivers the best face I've ever seen. Billy and Zack tell the other rangers how they all look like putties, and the six come to the command center, where everyone still looks like a putty. Zoran says this is all part of Zed's plan with the Saliguana. I mean, very loosely, but okay. Also, it breathes fire and they need to find a way to cool it down. Billy and Zack are in Billy's lab when Alpha sends down Trini, who morphs in front of them and she looks like the Yellow Ranger. So if they're morphed, the spell doesn't work. The hell was the point of it then? Saliguana is attacking and they need Billy and Zack. Billy says it hasn't been tested yet and Trini says put an extra computer chip in your pocket and let's go. It's not how a computer chip works, Trini, but Nice try. Everyone except Tommy morphs to the beach, fighting the putties. Also, Kim does this stunning work of martial arts. Billy and Zack fly all the way over to Japan, and they fight the Saliguana, and he whips out his fire breath. Zack breaks out the device they built, and he tries to use it, but it's not working. Maybe the batteries are in upside down again. Billy tells Zack to handle it while he handles the monster, but it doesn't make sense because Billy invented it. Also, apparently they needed that Biko chip to be put on there, and somehow now it works. Also, Zack keeps mentioning that Billy got hit in the head when the others show up for no other reason than we have footage of the Blue Ranger rubbing his head, so... The Rangers bring their weapons together and blast Salaguana dead, so Lord Zed tosses down a bomb to make him grow. The Rangers call out the Thunderzords, and apparently we have to sit through them calling them out every single time now. There's a short fight with the Red Dragon Thunderzord in warrior mode before he just mounts the others in chariot mode and flies around before forming the Thunder Megazord, which the Rangers keep calling the Mega Thunderzord. The Salaguana fires out his tongue to wrap them up, and suddenly, it's like a black piece of seaweed that wraps them up. Can you tell this one was a rough edit? Whatever, the Thunder Megazord kills a Sal Iguana with a Thunder Saber. At school, the Iguana is back, and the Rangers show up with glasses, which thanks to Alpha, will now do the reverse of what happened before. Billy and Zack put on the glasses, and it works. Also, Bulk and Skull find the Iguana, but for some reason, their spell wore off. Guess it's not important because Bulk and Skull are sending the lizard out to try to sniff out the Power Rangers because apparently, Miss Appleby was Miss Frizzle all along. This episode is another one where the American writers are flexing their creative writing skills with absolutely no regard for what the Japanese footage dictates. It's not a horrible thing, but it certainly is an odd one. Instead of going for low-hanging fruit, like having Billy and Zack have to watch Miss Appleby's pet iguana, which gets turned into a monster, we get this entirely new secondary plot that has nothing to do with the monster. I appreciate it for what it is, and I also give them credit for not being stuck to the Japanese stories, or lack thereof, to tell whatever they wanted. Will next time continue to be just as creative? 
Find out then. But until then, may the power protect you.